I'd like to think most of us do not buy things sight unseen. Even though a lot of the apps in the Windows Store are free, we don't want to install them unnecessarily, and that would be especially true if we paid for them, even if it were only a few dollars. Once we find an app that we're looking for, or at least one that sounds intriguing, we can display its listing page to learn more about it. The listing page is just a click or a tap away. We have the store open, and some search results for cooking are displayed, and we've filtered those only for those in the food and dining category and that are free. There's a lot of different apps that we see here, some pretty colored tiles, but if we look all the way over on the far right-hand side of the screen, we notice that there is a tile in particular called You Cook. Now my question is, You Cook what? The title sounds intriguing. We can see that it has a rating, but what else do we need to know about it before we can decide if this app is the one that we actually want to install? Are we willing to just close our eyes, click and hope for the best? I really don't think so. We'd probably like to know more about it. So in order to do so, let's go ahead and tap the tile or click the tile and see what else we can see. This is what an app listing page looks like. Of course, all of them might be slightly different, but there are some basic components that we can see. On the far left-hand side of the screen, it gives us a lot of good summary information. For example, the star rating, which is purely by those who have used the app and given their opinion on it. And I can tell you that the ratings for this particular app have changed dramatically since I first looked at it a couple of weeks ago. We can also see if there's a cost for it. It tells us at the bottom what kinds of permissions this app needs. In other words, is it going to use your webcam? Does it need network and internet access and so forth? And it might even give you the publisher, some copyright information, and possibly an age rating. On the right-hand side of the screen, we usually get to see some type of screenshot that shows us what the app will actually look like. And below the screenshot, we usually have some type of description. This is all on the overview page, and it may be enough to get us what we want, and we can simply decide if we're interested in this app or not. But if we go to the top right side of the screen, we realize that usually there are two other pages involved. For example, we can click or tap on details. Now I found that there aren't always a lot of extra details, usually a majority of it is on the overview page, but there might be some extra information here that's of interest to you. Generally what we find is that it tells us what languages it supports, as well as supported processors. So if you're thinking about using this on a mobile device, for example, this might be an important page to look at. Lastly, we have reviews, and this is where you get into really the opinions of those who have used the application. Is it good? Is it not good? In their opinion. And what I'll tell you is, opinions are just that. Sometimes we get people who only write things that they're unhappy about. Hopefully we have kind of a mix of the good, the bad, the ugly that can help both the reviewer and you decide if this is a good application or if it needs some improvement. At any point in time, we can go back to any one of the other pages. I like to get kind of a holistic view of an application before I make my decision. I can see what it looks like. I can read what the author or publisher has to say about it and I can choose to use the reviews and take them with a grain of salt. The reviews, though, are actually one of the most powerful features that we have in today's consumer economy. We can leave ones of our own, too. My recommendation is that you try to be polite, try to be professional, if you will, but also give your honest opinion on what you think of an application. If you want to leave a review, you can do that at any time by simply displaying the charms bar, going to settings, and then choosing rate and review. I'm not sure if you've ever heard the saying, the devil's in the details. Well, these apps do not have an extensive amount of information associated with them. They're pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. Our decision to download them and possibly to purchase them is not the most critical decision we'll probably make in a day. But it is nice to be able to see a preview of the app, read a little bit about what it's supposed to do, and maybe even get some opinions from other people who have used it already so we don't waste a lot of time. The flip side, of course, is sometimes those opinions can help us find the best app that's been made in the last 60 days. All of this information to make informed decisions about apps in the Microsoft Windows App Store can be visible and viewable right from the listing page.